Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at how to fit a ship. You've just got yourself a brand spanking shiny new hull and you've got no clue what you should be putting on it. I'm going to teach you how to figure that out, I'm going to teach you how to design a fit that is going to work for the content you want to clear. I'm going to be doing this with a Tech 1 Caracal, special thanks to the guys at Catskull. I literally pulled up at Amar and said, hey, pick a Tech 1 Cruiser, Destroyer or Frigate. First one I haven't done a video on, I will use for this, and Caracal was the first. So, here we are. By the end of this video, you should have a firm understanding on what ship stats and attributes mean, how to use the fitting screen, especially the simulation window, and thus have a firm grasp on fitting a ship for content you want to clear. If you do find this video useful or enjoyable, please let me know, hit like on it, drop a comment down below. Both of those things really help the channel out by recommending me to the YouTube algorithm. If you do want to go the extra mile to help support me making content like this in future, you can do so by heading across to my Patreon page, my PayPal tip jar, or my Redbubble merchandise store, all of which are linked in the description below. And while you're down there, you may as well click my referral link to get yourself 1 million free skill points. I do get a minor kickback from that, so thank you very much everyone who uses those links and come join the Catskull community discord excellent way to meet a bunch of really cool folks who would love to talk to you about all things EVE Online and other space games beside with all that said and done then let's jump right in to talking about how to fit your new ship so you've got yourself a brand new ship, whether you've purchased it off the market or contract, whether you've been sent it by your corp or another player, or whether you've picked it up from career agent missions, however you have that ship, you're now looking to figure out how on earth to fit this. What does the ship do? How does it best work? Now, just because you've got a ship doesn't mean you can kind of fit it in any way. You theoretically can, and there are always going to be exceptions to the rules that I explain in this video, but there are going to be things that certain ships excel at. If, for example, you are trained into armor and lasers, then the Caracal probably isn't the ship for you. But how do I know that? Well, this is the first thing we're going to have to figure out. So, when you're in your shiny new ship, we're going to open up the fitting menu. This is going to give us this screen, and you may have some of these all collapsed like this on the right hand side. So if your fitting screen does look like this all bunched up, well, we get most of the important information here, but go ahead and open up every single one of these menus. And we're going to discuss these quickly to talk about what the important information here is. So at the top we have your capacitor. Capacitor is the lifeblood of your ship. Think about it as kind of like your ship's battery. If you run out of capacitor, then none of your active modules will run. Things like armor repairers, shield boosters, certain weapon systems, stasis webifiers, afterburners, anything that you have to actually click to activate tends to use capacitor. Therefore, you need to have enough juice to keep it all running. We then have our offense docket here. You can see currently it's at zero DPS. It's because we've got nothing fit to the ship at all. Therefore, it's not capable of dealing any damage. We then have our defenses. Passively, you can see that this has got 7,765 effective hit points. That's what that means there. Effective hit points is calculated not just as the base value of the actual numbers themselves, but also by multiplying that out across the different resistances. Resistances we've talked about elsewhere in other videos, essentially when you're hit by something, the damage type often gets reduced. So when something is shooting at my shields, for example, here, if it's shooting at me with explosive damage, then 50% of that damage is going to be resisted. For every 100 damage they do to me, only 50 actually hits. On the other hand, if they're shooting my shields with a laser that's doing electromagnetic, if it's doing 100 electromagnetic damage, the shield will take 100 damage because 0% of that is resisted. And this varies from ship to ship, so you will need to bear that in mind. Finally then, well not finally at all, we then have targeting. This is how far out you can lock onto enemy targets. We then have how big your ship is with signature radius, that's how easy you are to lock onto. How many targets you can lock onto, 6 here. We then have navigation, how fast your ship can move under its basic propulsion, its align time, which is from a full stop, how long it takes to turn to something and accelerate to that point. Align time when you are at full stop is always the bare minimum. 
you don't have to be pointing in the right direction. Your actual ship's graphics don't matter. And we've talked about align time in other videos, but basically if you are sitting at zero meters per second, you are kind of aligned pointing facing every direction at once, or rather you're not po pointing any direction. So you just start to accelerate towards wherever you're going. Even if the target is directly behind you, if you are stationary, then your actual angle of direction is zero. It's non-existent. So even if it's behind you, you just start accelerating backwards and then the ship turns to rotate. Um, the ship's graphics in EVE are a little bit weird like that, but just trust me there. That If you are at zero, it doesn't matter which way you're facing, you will always align in this align time here. Finally, we then have drones down here. We've talked about drones in other videos as well. We'll touch on them briefly in this one, but it doesn't overly matter. The last bit to mention is the cost down here. This gives you an idea of how much everything on your ship is costing. This will matter when we come to simulating things later on. So that's the basics of the fitting screen on the right hand side. We then have the central area. We have high power slots. These are going to be mainly things like weapons, um, energy neutralizers, Nosferatus, probe launches, that kind of thing tends to go in the high slots. Anything that uses a lot of your ship's energy will go up there and it's primarily weapons based stuff. Your mid slots, mid energy slots tend to be things like tackle, things that hold enemy ships in place or disrupt enemy ships, things like propulsion and shield tanking modules. If you are using shields on a ship, they're gonna be going into your mid slots for the most part. There are some weapon upgrade stuff that goes in here as well, but not much, mainly things like tracking and guidance computers, plus again, some of your other application bits and bobs like webs and target painters. Your low slots on the other hand, this is where armor tanking comes in. So immediately you can kind of look at a ship and see if it's got a lot of mids and not many lows, it's probably more likely to be armor tanked. If it's got a lot of mids and not many lows, it's probably likely to be shield tanked. Not a hard and fast rule, again we'll talk about that later. But low slots tend to be where you'll put armor tank if you're using it. Passive modules often are in the low slots here. Um, things like damage control units, your weapon upgrades like gyro stabilizers, magnetic field stabilizers, that kind of thing. Things that make your weapons more powerful passively tend to be in the low slots as well. Then we have rigs down the side. Rigs are special modules that cannot be removed without destroying them. Once they're on your ship, they are on until destroyed. Um, you can put other rigs over the top of them, losing the original rigs bonus. This means rigs specifically are something you really want to be certain what you're doing with them when they go in. We also have to account for what is called power grid and CPU. CPU is kind of the modules that aren't size related. Things like webifiers that don't necessarily have a small, medium, large or extra large variant, um, disruptors, that kind of thing. They tend to use a lot of CPU. That's what limits those. So the difference between putting a load of say target painters um, onto a cruiser or a frigate, because obviously both those ships can use those, it's CPU that comes into play there. Power Grid, on the other hand, is about the size of the modules you can fit on your ship. If you look at a small armor repairer, a medium armor repairer, and a large armor repairer, then the large armor repairer is gonna use a lot more Power Grid than a medium, which will use a lot more than a small. That's how you restrict modules to ships using Power Grid. Rigs also have what is called co uh, calibration, like you're going to call that coherence, calibration, which again, it just uh, kind of restricts how many of different types of rigs you can put on. So that's your fitting screen. But with a vague understanding of that, how do you use this to tell what your ship can do? Well, straight up, we want to look at weaponry. Weaponry is usually a high slot, right? And we've got five high slots here. But notably, we don't have any turret hardpoints. That means the Caracal is clearly not going to use turrets. We cannot fit energy turrets, hybrid turrets, projectile turrets, doesn't matter. It doesn't have the hardpoints for them. What it does have, as we can see from these little circles over here, are launcher hardpoints. This is where we're gonna put missile launchers. And you will find that some ships do have options for both. You might be able to fit five turrets and one launcher, for example. This will give you a vague idea of what that ship ship should already be using. So here on the Caracal, we can kind of infer that its weaponry is probably going to be missile based because it's got five high slots, all of which can be launcher hard points. They don't have to be, you can put anything else in there you like, what are referred to as utility high slots, but we cannot put turrets in here. So we know this isn't a turret ship, it's going to be a missile ship. 
Looking at the mid slots, we've got five mids and only four lows. That insinuates it should be a shield tank ship. And if we go across to the defense here, you can see that we've got more shield hit points than we do of anything else. Again, this infers this should be a shield tank because if you're going to have a, if you're going to be taking damage on part of your ship, you want to be taking it on the largest part, right? So if you've got 2,125 shield hit points and only 1,500 armor hit points, you probably want to be taking those hits on your shield first and foremost. Again, there are exceptions to this, but bear with me. This is all inference though, this is just looking at it and kind of learning to read that. What we can also do is click on the little eye here and this will open up the information page. Now straight away this is going to give us a lot of really useful knowledge. Under ship characteristics, we can see it is a medium sized ship, which means it's primarily fitted with medium modules. Again, not a hard and fast rule. Sometimes you will oversize modules, a bigger afterburner, bigger shields, that kind of thing. But medium is probably what we're looking at to start off with. We can then go across, we see this is an attack ship, it's got good damage and mobility, hit and run pursuit tactics means it's not particularly good at tanking, it's very much more a attack vessel, get in there, do the damage and then do what you need to after. We can see here, as we inferred earlier, it is a missile ship. Because it's got turret, uh, no turret hard points, it's only got launcher hard points, we could tell that earlier, but here the game does confirm that for us. Finally, we have a shield symbol here, defensive system that utilizes medium level fitting slots and regenerates slowly on its own. So shield tanking is what we're going to be going for here. This is already telling us that this is what this ship is designed to do, but there's still more information we can glean out of this, and that's from the skill bonuses. Here you can see Kaldari Cruiser is going to give us a 5% bonus to rapid light missile, heavy missile, and heavy assault missile launcher rate of fire. So, we're probably going to want to use one of those weapon systems, right? 10% bonus to light missile, heavy missile, and heavy assault missile, maximum velocity. Again, strongly suggests we want light missiles, heavy missiles, or heavy assault missiles. If you opened this up and it gave bonuses to shield boosters, you're probably going to want to fit shield boosters. If it says armor repairer, you're probably going to want to fit armor repairers, that kind of thing. This page will give you a strong indication on what you should be looking at in order to fit your vessel. That will therefore give you an idea of what kind of modules that ship can use. And of course, this is only once you've got the ship. If you wanted to prepare ahead of time, well, we can open up the ship tree. We can go into any of the different factions. Let's have a look at Amar, and we're gonna open up the Mala here. Here, 5% bonus to medium energy turret damage means we're going to use medium energy turrets on this. We're not going to use missiles, right? And a 4% bonus to all armor resistances means armor is probably the way to go rather than shields on this particular vessel. And we can confirm this up here. Again, it's a medium ship using combat, hulls with good damage and defenses, energy turrets for its main type of damage and armor, defensive system that utilizes low level fitting slots and does not regenerate on its own. That already has given us a ton of information for fitting either of those ships. So now that we've got that information, how do you actually go about designing a fit? For that, we come back to the main fitting screen, and here on the left-hand side, we have these two toggles. We are going to open up the browser, the top toggle that looks like a spanner. Open that up, and it's gonna give you this screen here down the side. At the top, you can change the different slots that you're browsing through. We can have a search bar here, and we have all these different bits here that are gonna allow us to browse through the different types of gear. We can search, but for now we're going to be using mainly this. Going to charges is things like ammunition, scripts, stuff that you plug into those particular bits and pieces. We're not going to worry too much about that right now, we'll touch on that later. So let's start off. We've already had a look at the Caracal, we've seen that it's got a load of high slots and that they are launchers. So we're probably going to want to put some launchers in there. Browsing down here, we can open up turrets and launchers missile launchers and here it's not going to tell you small medium or large you're going to have to learn those things yourself i know from experience that for a missile ship essentially we're going to be looking at either heavy assault launchers um, heavy launchers or rapid light missile launchers those are our three medium types for uh, missiles 
Now, because I want this to be quite a long range ship, it's got a lot of locking range here, I want something that can do damage from a distance. Now, I know that's going to be heavy missiles, but again, you can browse through this. You can use things like the comparison window to get an idea as well. I've talked about that in a previous video, but for now, we're just going to have a look at heavy launchers. This tells us the different types of heavy missile launcher available to us. Now, heavy missile launcher ones are going to be readily available early on in the game. They're cheap, they're cheerful. We then have the heavy missile launcher two, which is the tech two variant. That's gonna require a bit more skill training. Then we have the named ones in the middle, like the Arbalest. These require low skills, um, but they do more than the standard heavy missile launcher one. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to keep things super, super basic. So we're just going to go with heavy missile launcher ones. Now we've got five high slots. All five can be hard points. So we are going to drag and drop five times across here. And you'll see that's taken us straight into the simulation already. We could have clicked up here to enter simulation. You can click there to exit simulation like so. So we're just going to do that quickly and then back. So let's add a heavy missile launcher one and another one and another one and another one and another one. We're gonna fill all five of those high slots with heavy missile launchers. When you mouse over them, you see there's no real information. That's because there's no charges loaded. But you can see by fitting these, we've consumed some of our CPU and some of our power grid. 56% of our power grid has already been used and 34.8% of our CPU has already been used. That's really not great. That's a lot gone already. But because this is a weapon, we don't just want to look at this and go, right, cool, well, that's it, because we're still sitting at zero DPS. We want to know what this weapon's doing. This is where we click on charges. Now, because the game recognizes we've got these launchers fitted, it's put a launcher symbol here. We can click on that and it'll give you options of what you can put in there. Because we're keeping this really, really basic, let's go back and look at the Caracal. There we are. Sometimes Kaldari ships have bonuses that explicitly state kinetic missiles. This one doesn't. It's straight up rate of fire and maximum velocity, so we can pick any missile. That said, we're going to go for kinetic ones anyway, just because I like them. So Scourge Heavy Missiles, we're going to drag and drop those, and boom, we've loaded them in to the Caracal. You can now see we've got a flight range of 94 kilometers. That's probably a bit much considering we can only lock to 72, basically 71 kilometers, but it's good enough. We don't want longer than that. We don't, we're not gonna be able to do longer than this, but we don't wanna be shorter than it if we can, if we're looking for a long range vessel. You see that's given us 122.7 DPS straight off the bat. Not bad at all. That said, let's just quickly clear this. If we click on this little bit here, we can go through all of these different options. I'm gonna to go to unfit mod modules and remove all of those. What if you wanted to try a different weapon system? Instead of heavy launchers, let's look at the heavy assault missile launchers. And again, we're gonna drag and drop all five of these into here. With those loaded, we're gonna go back into charges, click on the icon, and this time around, we're gonna go scourge heavy assault missile. Now you see the DPS on these is more. They do more damage over a short period of time. Looking at our stats down here, it's slightly less CPU used and a little bit more power grid. Still not great, but we'll figure that out. 72 kilometer lock range. What are the range of these? 30 kilometers. So we're actually losing 40 kilometers of lock range. Not a problem. It means if we can hit them with our missiles, we can also lock them. So that works either way. Finally, let's unfit all of those. Go back into modules. And then rather than heavy assault launchers, we're gonna to go to rapid light missile launchers. And we're gonna drag and drop five of these in, just like so. Now, again, across the charges, click on the launcher icon, and we're gonna go scourge light missile. And you see, we've actually got some pretty good DPS here, 131.5, and this time with a range of 63 kilometers. That's nice and close to this, so pretty good either way. I'm actually going to stick with the lights because that's also given us lower CPU usage and lower power grid. But if you want the extra range of the heavies and get that full 72 kilometers, go for the heavies. I'm just gonna stick with the lights for the time being because I'm imagining this ship is going to be in something lower level missions where I'm gonna be shooting a lot of frigates and thus the better application of light missiles is also gonna help. But I'm getting ahead of myself there. Okay, so that's now our high slots done. For the mids and lows, we've looked at damage. We now want to look at tank survivability, right? So first things first, what type of tank was this ship going to use? That's right, it was a shield tank ship. We have no bonuses to shields, particularly nothing here is explicitly shields, but it suggests shields here. And looking at our stats down here, we can see that we've got more HP in shields. So we might as well go for that. 
We can also click this little bit here and change this to shield boost rate if we want to see how much we are going to be repairing with shield boosters, or we can look at passive shield recharge. You'll see the ship has a basic five hit points per second of shield recharges over time. That's one of the cool things about shields, they do just passively recharge. But we're not gonna do a passive charge, that's a bit more complex, something we'll do in a future video. So, we want a way to repair our shields. If we click into the mid slots here, you'll see it's now changed from high slots to mid slots up here. You can do that manually, just toggle these on and off, or you can just click into the slot you want to browse. Now we can go into shield because we're looking for shield modules, right? And we're looking for shield boosters, something that is going to repair our shields overall. Now we know from previous discussions as well here, this is a medium ship. So we are going to be looking at medium modules first and foremost. So we'll start with a medium shield booster. Medium shield booster one, let's drag that into the slot here. 26 hit points per second. With that active, we are going to be getting 26 hit points a second back. Not particularly much, but it's something. It has, however, dropped us all the way down into capacitor instability. You'll see that when we are using this, we are eventually going to run out of capacitor. Running the ship like this, we've got two minutes and 27 seconds before we are out of capacitor. And you can click on this to see what it would be like without it on. So without the shield booster running, we are cap stable, obviously, because nothing's using capacitor. Click it on, boom, there we are. Now that's not particularly great. We've got fairly low resistances across the board here um, and we're not gonna be able to keep up with damage with just a piddly little medium shield booster. So we can look at other things. Those resistances I said were a problem so we can go shield hardness, right? Electromagnetic is a problem. So let's grab an EM shield hardener. EM shield hardener one, let's drop that in there. Oh, would you look at that? We now suddenly have much better shield resistance and our EHP has gone up to reflect that as well. Really nice, it means any electromagnetic damage we were taking before would have been just all of that damage. If they did 100 electromagnetic, we'd have taken 100. Now if they do 100 electromagnetic, we're only taking 55. Big, big difference. And they're not all just electromagnetic, explosive or kinetic or thermal. You can also get a multi-spectrum shield hardener. So we're gonna add one of these now. This again, boosts all of these because that thermal was a little bit low. But is that really enough for us? Mm, I don't know, let's actually remove that module and we're gonna put a straight up thermal shield hardener in. See, I like the look of that better. These all going up was nice, but the thermal was still a little bit low. That to me is a bit better. I mean, we could also just add a multi-spectrum on top of that, but you'll see our capacitor's gonna run out in one minute 20. Even if we turn the shield booster off, oh no, we are still cap stable, but barely. Nice resistances but we're still gonna take damage. And the second we turn that on, we've got one minute and 20 of capacitor left. That's, that's not great. So let's actually take both of those off and we're just gonna go for a multi-spectrum for the time being. Little bit low on the thermal, but we can sort that later. For the meantime, that's us going there. Now capacitor, okay, that's not a great capacitor. Is there something we could do about that? Well, yes, there actually is. We can now go into, I've got to remember what this is, under engineering equipment here, capacitor batteries, capacitor boosters, or capacitor recharges. Batteries are probably your simplest here. Again, we're a medium ship, so we're gonna go in there. Medium capacitor battery one, boom. Suddenly, we've got much more stable capacitor. If we look at things here, you see we're still not stable with everything running. Could we perhaps change that? Could we fit a large cap battery in? Yes, we could. We're still not stable, but it's now 11 minutes and 30 seconds. That's a lot better, right? Cool. We'll remember that. We're going to stick to a medium one for now, but we're going to remember that and come back to it later. Finally, because we've got good range, we don't need to worry too much about maneuvering around the battlefield that quickly and efficiently. So an afterburner is probably going to be good enough for us for some propulsion. So we're going to propulsion and afterburners. Again, if you're not sure what the difference between an afterburner and a micro warp drive is, I've, sh I've done that in another Catskull Academy video you can check out. Now it's worth noting actually, I forgot to mention, as I scroll up and down on these, you can see that the power grid and the CPU on the right hand side changes to fit. So you can see here, the 10 meganewton afterburner will be quite nice, but 100 meganewton, oh dear, power grid is flashing. We do not have the power grid to fit that in. So we're gonna go 10 meganewton afterburner. One meganewton, not worth it. That is a frigate sized module. Frigates and destroyers will be affected by that, but the mass will not be enough to push a cruiser around properly. So we're gonna go with 10 meganewton there, and you'll see that's now pushed our navigation speed, our maximum velocity, right up to almost 640. Again, if we turn that off, 287. When it's active, 640. Again, we can see our capacitor not doing too great at the moment, but we'll talk about that later. 
Finally, for the low slots, if we click onto these, you'll see that there are, again, different options we have. We don't really want anything like electronic warfare here. We don't need any sensor upgrades, harvest equipment not important to us, hull and armor, we're shield tanking, so those aren't important. Propulsion, it's just propulsion upgrades, which we're okay with at the time being. Shield, this is for uh, things like uh, passive shield, We'll talk about that in a future video when I do a deep dive into how passive shield tanking works. We're gonna ignore those. What we're actually gonna look at is turrets and launches and the weapon upgrades. Now here, we have some really cool stuff. Ballistic control systems. These increase the damage of your missiles. We can also look at missile guidance enhancers that increase their range and application. So let's try a missile guidance enhancer to start with. First of all, we need to remember what we had. 63 kilometers up here, right? 63 kilometers maximum flight range. Let's add a missile guidance enhancer in. Suddenly we're 69 kilometers, we can hit further out and that's closer to our lock range. So that's probably a good idea, right? Because it means we can hit things further away from us and deal some good damage to them. We can then add ballistic control systems, which just straight increase our DPS. In fact, while I'm dragging this, 131.5, right? Let's see what happens. 152.9, nice. Let's add a few more of those. There's another one added, 174.3, and another one, let's just do it. 189.9, not quite as big a jump as we saw before, and we've got a little alert popped up here, letting us know that there is a diminishing return on that. Missile damage isn't increasing as much for that third one as it was for the first or second. You can kind of see that if I turn these off. So with one, we go from 131 to 152. That's a 21 DPS increase. Second one active, we go from 152 up to 174. Again, that's a 21 odd DPS increase there, so same kind of jump. This third one, however, 174 to 189. That's only gone up by about 16, so we're getting less from this. That said, it's still an increase, and an increase is an increase, right? So we're happy with that. That's given us a nice bit of extra DPS on this ship there, a bit more damage coming out of it, and thanks to that guidance enhancer, we're getting more range as well very very nice this brings us finally then to these last three slots the rig so we're going to tap into these open up rigs and you can see we've got all of these different bits here armor rigs for increasing your armor astronautic for things like your thrusters um, and ship maneuverability drone rigs for drones electronic superiority for e-war energy weapon for lasers engineering rigs for things like capacitor hybrid weapon rigs for your rail guns and blasters, missile launcher rigs, which we could certainly put in there for some extra damage or extra range from our missiles, projectile weapons, obviously for projectiles, targeting rigs, they're all pretty self-explanatory. But we still have this big issue here with capacitor. So let's open up our engineering rigs. I had to remember which one it was then. Medium engineering rigs, and now we can see all of these different things here. And again, we can hit an information on these, read the description of what it does. So for example, an ancillary current router is designed to increase a ship's power grid. So you'll see that if I mouse over that and imagine it fitted, our power grid looks like it goes down. So if I mouse off, look at the power grid down here, and then I mouse back over it. And then I mouse back over it, there we are, it goes down a little bit just to showcase that we're getting more capacitor and thus a lower percentage is being used. But we don't need that, right? Capacitor control circuit, that helps our capacitor. Let's have a look. Designed to increase a ship's capacitor recharge rate. There are some others as well we can look for. I'm looking for a semiconductor memory cell. Designed to increase a ship's capacitor capacity. So those are our two capacitor rigs, capacitor control circuit and semiconductor memory cell. If I mouse over a capacitor control circuit, you'll see that takes us to depletes in two minutes 40, minus 8.6 gigajoules per second on our delta. Semiconductor memory cell depletes in three minutes and a nine gigajoules per second delta. So I'd argue that one's a bit better for us. So we're gonna pop that one in to one of our rig slots. And you'll see that's now used a little bit of our calibration as well. Now let's have a look again. Capacitor control circuit depletes in 354, or do, 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 semiconductor in 418. So we're gonna add a semiconductor this time. Another one of those. We're still not cap stable, but it's still a lot better. Could we get that a bit higher? 715 or 727. Let's go for the capacitor control circuit to get that delta up a bit. Now you see, we're still not cap stable, but we still got all this power grid down here, right? So remember this battery, let's take that off. We're gonna go back across here. We're gonna go back into engineering equipment. We're gonna go into capacitor batteries and we're gonna try a large cap battery one. 
it still fits within our power grid. We can oversize the capacitor and suddenly, boom, we're cap stable. What happens if I turn these off? Can I lose some of those rigs? Yes, I can lose one of those rigs and still be cap stable. This means I can go back into these, close these down, and let's look at some missile launcher rigs, get that damage up a little bit higher, because if there's nothing else to do, you may as well push your damage up. So we've got bayloading accelerator. This one, if we hit information on it, is going to increase our rate of fire at the expense of increased CPU requirements. You can see if I mouse over it, CPU requirements are fine, we still fit, calibration goes right up though, and our DPS goes to 198.7. I know that the other one that affects damage is Calefaction Catalyst. This increases the amount of damage each missile does on a hit. Same kind of negatives but we can have a look at those side by side. 199.1 DPS with the Califaction, Bay loading gives us 198.7. So 198.7 compared to 199.1, that's more DPS, we're gonna load that in there. Boom, we now have a fit. That is our Caracal fit. We have some decent survivability off this. We have some maneuverability. We've got good damage coming off it. A little bit of cap recharge. We are cap stable, which is nice. You don't have to be cap stable. Obviously you could sit there and swap these out for other things like better shields or better uh, like other things going on. And then you just turn off your shield booster when you're not using it and only use it when you need it. Of course you could oversize the shield booster rather than the cap battery and go for a large shield booster. There's also all different types of these modules. You'll find that if I were to go into, for example, let's go back into shield boosters, turn the rigs off and have a look at shields. So shield boosters. Yeah, we saw that there were medium shield boosters here, these ones. Then there's faction and storyline, and there's dead space variants as well. These are more expensive, but they tend to have either better, uh, you know, more shield boosting, or they have lower requirements in order to fit them, that kind of thing. So this gives you a good starting point for a fit, but remember this is all tech one gear. What we could do is upgrade all of this to Tech 2 and see how that fits, and you can play around with this to your heart's content. But let's imagine for a moment that you're happy with this. You like how this is done, but you're not quite ready to buy it all yet. Or maybe you are. What we're gonna do is gonna come across here to Save As. We can now name this fit. So we're just gonna go Sample Fit there, and we can hit Save. That has now saved this fit to our fits. Where do we find those? Well, we come across here to the left-hand side, we go into hulls and fits at the top, and now we can come down to all our different types here. Caracal is a cruiser. It is a Caldari cruiser. You can also follow the green arrows because it shows the ship you're currently in. And there's the Caracal fit that we had. You can see I've got a couple of other ones here as well, um, but we've got those different fits. Let's save that again, just to make sure, because it doesn't appear to have saved it there. So we're just gonna go sample, fit, and save. There we are, updated fitting. So it's in there somewhere. I just can't necessarily see it right off the bat. Oh, it's probably because I'm in it right now. Anyway, so with it saved as there, we can now also hit save as. And when it opens here, we can go to buy. We've already got the cost down here, 17.3. But remember, this is estimated, depending on where you are. I'm in a mart at the moment. So let's see what happens if I hit buy. It's going to populate the list here with all of those different modules. And I'm going to drag that so it sort of fits the same size as the rest of the windows. And you'll see it was estimated 17.3, actually 18.21. So cool, I'm happy with that. It's within the amount of ISK I have available. Let's hit buy. It's now going to buy all of that. All done. If I open up my inventory now, you'll see that if I go into the item hanger, it's done everything. It's actually bought the ship again as well, which I forgot to take off. You can click that off. But all of the items we wanted, plus whatever I had in Amar otherwise, is already here, right? So we can now sit here and just exit simulation and drag and drop all of these in one by one by one by one by one, right? Yeah, we can, but that's the awful way of doing it. Instead, we can go to ship hanger. We can right click the ship. We can go to multi fit. We can hit sample fit and oh, boom. There we are, it's fully fitting all of those modules. Now if I change across to the one called Sample Fit, make it active. Oh look, everything's already fitted. Nice and straightforward. Charges aren't loaded yet though, but we can again just open up the inventory, go into our Sample Fit and drag those in. Obviously you're probably also gonna want more missiles than I was carrying there, but that's a starting point, right? That is how to start a fit. Theoretically, you wanna take this out and try it in the content you're doing. Make sure that you have a escape plan available in case your fit is absolutely atrocious and doesn't do what you need it to. And if it doesn't do what you need it to, 
Consider why it didn't do what it needed to. Were you getting hit by certain ships and just taking too much damage? Then you need more tank. Maybe we could swap out some of the stability here for more tank. We could lower some of the DPS. We could take out, if we go back into simulate, we could take out this Califaction Catalyst, go into the rigs, go into shield rigs, and we could go for something like a charge economizer. Is that what I'm looking for? Reduce the power need? Nope. Defense Operational Solidifier, I think that's the one I'm looking for. There we are, reduce the duration of shield booster cycles, so that then means we have faster operating shields. Boom. We're now at 30.6 HP per second, slightly lower DPS, but you know, it gives us more in our shield booster. We can play around with different things like that. We're actually still capacitor stable, which is nice with that. But you can play around with the fit in order to achieve what you want to. Maybe the enemies are outranging you, then you want longer range weapons. And this fit, I doubt they will. Um, you might find that you're not doing enough damage to them, so you need a different type of weapon, or you need something like a web of fire if enemies are moving too fast. Target painters if they're moving too fast and they're far away, that kind of thing. You just learn to play with the fit based on what it is that you're looking to achieve. And of course, I've showcased this with a Caracal, but you can do this with anything and you don't even need to own the ship. If I go back into the ship tree and again, I decide, well, let's go and fit an Omen. I can right click it and simulate ship. And then bam, I can do all of this again right here, right here with an Omen. Start fitting this with what we need. What does an Omen use? Oh, that's right, medium energy turrets. So they're what we're gonna put in the top slots here. So we're gonna go into turrets and launchers, energy turrets, and pick whatever it is you want and start dropping those in to get an idea for how to fit that ship. I'm not gonna sit here and go through how to fit an omen as well. Hopefully I've covered the basics of like what it, you know, how, how this all works at this point, give you an idea of what you can be looking at and how to fit a ship for different things. Anyway, that is probably everything you need to know in regards to how to use the fitting screen yourself. If you have got a fit from one of my videos, from the description for example, what you can also do is come down to this little icon here, import and export, import from clipboard. So you highlight it out of my video description, press Control C to copy it to your clipboard. You then come here, hit import from clipboard, and it will then load it all in. So let's just demonstrate that quickly. So here, for example, let's grab the copy to clipboard, which is how I export it to the video descriptions. Then we are going to move back to the other Caracal, the empty one. So make active. You see, we've now got the empty Caracal. So let's go import from clipboard. It's gonna pull it up like it did when we hit save. You can buy it from here. You can hit simulate straight off here as well, or we can just hit fit and put it all in. I'm gonna simulate and it'll load it all in and you can see how this will work. Gives you warnings up here, so like diminishing returns on these different bits and pieces. Um, it may tell you some of these you don't have the skills for. That's an excellent way to have a look into which skills you should be training to fly a particular ship to the standard that I've shown it in a video. It's a good starting point at least. Anyway, that's something we will cover in a future video, how to set up skill plans. Getting an idea of how to fit a ship first of all, I think is a very useful skill to start off with. Anyway, folks, this video is already getting a little bit long, probably coming in on about 25 to 30 minutes at this point. So hopefully you have found this useful. If you do have any questions, please drop them into the comment section down below. I do respond to as many of my comments as possible. Not always, you know, immediately, but I try to. Obviously, YouTube is my main career. It's my main source of income. Um, I do try to engage with the community as best as possible or come join the Catskull community discord. There you can get hold of me. Do feel free to ping me for my attention. Otherwise, people in that Discord as well can obviously answer questions for you as well. If you've got a ship and you're looking for sample fits, do consider that. Just remember, what's, what may work for the goose doesn't necessarily work for the gander. A whole one man's trash is another man's treasure. Everyone is going to have different fits that work for them with the skills they have, with the content they're looking to run. So be as thorough as possible when asking for help. Don't just go, I've got a caracal, how do I fit it? Because do you fit it for PvE, PvP, wormholes, null sec, high sec? What, what is it you're looking to do? Because those are all completely different fits. I'm looking for a Caracal for PvE isn't even particularly narrow either. I'm looking for a Caracal to run Tech 1 Electrical Abyssals. Bam, you've got yourself contact. I'm looking for a Caracal to run L2 Agent Missions. I'm looking for a PvP Caracal for Faction Warfare. I'm looking for a PvP Caracal for running through wormholes. That kind of jazz. That's how you get help. Anyway, folks, all that said and done, thank you for watching right the way through to the end. Hope you found this helpful. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!